Well, thank you so much, everyone. Welcome. Uh, happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you uh, for inviting me to this discussion that we'll have with Milan uh, about TikTok. And I will give you just two minutes to start talking to Milan. Uh, I mean, we'll be just two minutes because I would like to explain you like a little bit more about the discussion that we'll have today. So obviously, uh, as you already saw, like we are talking about TikTok. And on the screen, you can see uh, like the report that we have recently launched from Launchmetrics, TikTok takes over the power of creators in 2021. Um, and in the next slide, for those uh, of you who don't know us, thank you. So um, I would like to briefly explain you what we do at Launchmetrics and why are we like creating or producing this type of reports about TikTok and about like many other uh, industry trends that we analyze. Um, so I'm Gina Guberti, as can I say, like I'm the vice president of marketing at Launchmetrics. And Launchmetrics is the leading brand performance cloud for fashion, luxury, and beauty companies, beauty brands. Um, we have been working for over a decade with over like 1,000 clients. You can see some of their names on the screen, like Balenciaga, Solando, Shiseido, or expertise is in the fashion FLB industry, as we call it. And of course, in all this time, we have been partnering with key industry uh, leaders like the CFDA, IMG, Cosmoproof, uh, Camera Nacional de la Moda. Well, you can read uh, like some information about us, but what we essentially do, what we um, are at Launchmetrics is a software and data analytics company. Uh, we provide like marketing and professional, uh, marketing and communication professionals from the, from the industry with essentially like technology and services uh, for doing uh, three main things. The first thing is we help them to, uh, we help them to understand uh, what are the voices that matter for them. Like if uh, the influencers or the partners or the own media is the key voice for their marketing strategies. Then secondly, we uh, support them in, the, in their brand activations. Uh, we have solutions and technology for event organization, for samples management, for digital galleries. And lastly, and most importantly, and what is related to this uh, report, we help them to understand their brand performance. We help them to measure absolutely everything that they are doing and to analyze what is giving them, what is offering them a higher return investment. And in the next slide, talking about measurement, uh, I would like to talk about this criteria or this metric that is essentially the one that we have used to uh, analyze TikTok and to, uh, I mean, is the one that our clients are using for measuring their brand performance and their marketing initiatives. Um, and this metric is, is called media impact value. Media impact value is a proprietary algorithm uh, that we have developed at Launch Metrics. Um, and it's essentially, it's essentially a monetary um, element that we can apply to every single post, uh, media publication, um, to any like TikTok uh, content, to Instagram uh, mentions, like absolutely everything that you can imagine in terms of marketing can be measured through media impact value. This is a metric that is not only taking into account uh, quantitative attributes, that it's what like every and all of the measurement uh, platforms are offering, like reach, engagement, and all these type of things, but it's also taking into account qualitative attributes that for me, it's much more important because at the end, if you really want to understand the return on investment of your uh, activities, especially in the case of brands that are our target audience, uh, they need to uh, know not only like how many publications they got or how many mentions from influencers they got, but also the quality of those mentions. The um, algorithm has been recognized by the industry um, and I'm sure like probably you saw like some publications, not only in media outlets, but also um, from some uh, like key opinion leaders like Chiara Ferrani or, or Amy Song. They are repurposing our content from time to time and some of the like the reports that we are uh, launching and so on. And then second part of the methodology for you to understand like what this TikTok report is about and how we have been analyzing the data in the next slide, it's uh, what we call the voice-centric approach. Here we are. Um, so this is another important part of how we measure marketing campaigns and how we measure all these social platforms. Um, because we understand that today for uh, 
uh, in marketing and especially for brands, they are playing with many different voices. They are playing with their own media, uh, with celebrities, with influencers, with partners. At the end, they are trying to balance their efforts and their investments in order to uh, move consumers through the path of purchase and uh, trying to drive them from the awareness stage at the beginning of the relation with their brands uh, to the consideration, conversion, and retention. So this is also another super, like an important part of our methodology. And it's something that you will find in this report that we are presenting today about TikTok and about like the impact uh, that brands can get through TikTok. Say that now, after this quick introduction of launch metrics and what we do, uh, I would like to start talking with Milan. Uh, Thank you so much. Is that I mean, it's the second time that we met. The other day, we were having like a brief discussion about TikTok and everything that it's uh, he doing. Like, obviously, well, he's a creator, a TikTok creator, expert in finance. Uh, it's if you didn't see his TikToks, I think it's super cool. Like the way he's presenting like business, entrepreneurship, and finance topic in a total different way. Like I never thought that finance and business could be so exciting and so fun. Um, and, and it's really uh, super interesting. So I would like to start a conversation with you, Milan. And if you are okay, uh, I will go through, through some of the data from the TikTok report, and then we can uh, like discuss some of the topics that, that we have analyzed yeah. from Antwetics. Yeah, for sure. And hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. And I really appreciate all the kind words, Gina. Great, yeah. so let's, let's go. Great. So let's start with the state of TikTok. So the first part that you can find in this report is essentially like a global analysis of uh, how professionals are using the platform, um, how, like, I don't know, the challenges, the goals that they have. And I have two slides that I would like to share with you. The first one, if you, I think here, um, there are some like interesting stats. Uh, the main one uh, that is the one that you can see on the paragraphs says that more than one third of professionals affirm to invest in the platform and nearly 70% uh, plan to include TikTok in future creator marketing activities. That's uh, one of the, of the main stats that we have been promoting and that uh, have been mentioned by the media when we, um, when we released this report. But then the second one is the 60, almost 69% of professionals that say that their top reasons for investing in TikTok is to engage with a new consumer group. Um, like at, at the end, I think it's quite important to understand that even if TikTok is not still like the most powerful tool, because obviously we have some monsters like Instagram and Facebook that are like quite big, but the truth is in the last year, we have seen uh, like an impressive trend, uh, trend of growth uh, through TikTok. And that's essentially what we have analyzed in, in this report. In the second slide, if you move into the next slide, um, here there are some uh, really interesting stats coming from also from the survey that we distributed through professional and non-professionals, um, talking about the objectives mm -hmm. that they have when investing on, on TikTok. And it's quite interesting to see how when asking this question, we got a, like a really long list of objectives that they are trying to uh, to uh, like hit through their TikTok activity, like raising awareness, driving sales, reaching new generations of consumers, supporting digital strategy. Um, so again, you can understand through this data how TikTok is becoming more and more important, not only from a brand awareness perspective that maybe, I mean, maybe uh, some people think that, well, TikTok is the place where the young people is going to like pause their, their dancing and their things. No, we cannot underestimate this platform from a creator and from a brand perspective, because right now we definitely see how uh, it's becoming like a business uh, and in, an interesting platform for many different goals talking to Milan and I have two questions like obviously like you're a creator you have been like creating content for like a long time not only on TikTok but in uh, in different um, platforms I would like to ask you like what makes TikTok content so special uh, like what do you think that is the like the difference between posting content on TikTok or on Instagram or any other channel yeah so um, I briefly talked about this the other day but I think it's really special because of its relatability. Like people are making content just on their iPhones, right? It's so low production and people are making content in their rooms. 
just sitting on their bed, they're saying something. And those are type kind of the videos that I've seen just go really viral. And, you know, even for me, I'm when I'm creating content, like I do have scripts for the finance stuff, right? Because I need to kind of help people learn that stuff, but I'm shooting that with my iPhone and straight from TikTok. So it's kind of just more relatable to people. It's not so high production and like people don't feel like they're trying to be targeted and be sold something. So I think that's a big part of why that TikTok content is special. And that's why right now, like TikTok is starting to, you know, push ads more. So some of the videos I see, it's just user generated content. And I feel like that content does a lot well, right? Because sometimes I don't even think it's an ad. It's just a user generated piece of content that's just uh, shown up on my For You page. And I tend to watch it more than, you know, if I saw like a highly produced ad. So I think that's one big reason, relatability. Yeah, it's it's true. And it's super natural, like the way you're posting and you're telling stories in a short video. So yeah, that's true. What what about engagement in terms of audience engagement? Like what are the differences between platforms? Like when you are posting something on Instagram or on TikTok, I don't know, do you feel there is a different like perception of from your audience or your relationship itself? Do you feel it is like kind of different? Yeah, um, well, for me personally, I think on Instagram, the demographic is different. Like it's a lot of more older people on there. So I think for Instagram, it's definitely like a lot more serious and it's definitely a lot more serious conversations around the business. But on TikTok, it's really fun. Like there's a lot of young people on there. So, you know, it's like uh, sometimes you'll see these comments of people saying, oh, I'm early to the video, like stuff like that. And I think the engagement is different um, in that sense where it's just a lot more fun. It's not as serious. And while on Instagram, people want to get more in depth about these certain things and certain topics I talk talk about which is awesome right um but like that's just the difference between the engagement okay and i i'm super curious about this because obviously you're talking about business finance like topics that i know i don't know but for normal users on tiktok we we wouldn't expect to find um yeah how was that first moment in which you say, okay, I'm going to jump into TikTok and start producing content and start talking about business and finance in a totally different way? Like how, how, how it happened? Yeah. So at first I started on, so I'm really into e-commerce. Like I want to, you know, e-commerce is like a big passion of mine. So just selling things online. And when I first got onto TikTok, um, that's kind of the stuff that started showing up on my For You page. Cause I started watching more of those videos. I started looking up like business videos and I, saw other entrepreneurs who were starting their online businesses and they showed how they were packing their orders and all that stuff. And it was really cool. And that's when I realized, oh, you know, maybe there's a place for business and finance on here. And like, at first I just wanted to kind of document my journey on there as well, but I've been into like business and finance for, you know, forever. So I created some videos around that at first. I only like was doing it on the side and it was just fun, but then I created like a script fun type of video and that one just went really viral. So I created another one and then that one also went viral. So then I realized, oh, okay, cool. So people enjoy these videos and you know, there's an opportunity here. <laughs> so then I just started creating and yeah, it just, they just blew up. And like in the first couple of weeks, I gained like a couple hundred thousand followers. So I was like, and that was just oh. recording from my iPhone, right? No professional yeah. gear, no nothing. So that was really cool. Yeah, that's super interesting. What would you say that now you're, I, I don't know, this is a really like, complex question but no um do you, do you have a favorite channel like is there somewhere will you feel like more connection with your audience or more engagement with your audience um i think i still tend to focus more on tiktok like i am okay. i have grown on other platforms like instagram as well um but i think i really like um just the interaction on tiktok with the audience it's just a lot more fun and yeah and I, I imagine it's faster, right? Like just after you post like something, you start like getting some reactions and- Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. The virality is uh, definitely, there's more virality on TikTok. Yeah, great. Um, thank you. Um, so following on the on the TikTok report, um, I would like to talk now about more about brand collaborations. So in the next slide, I guess, yeah reasons uh why brands are using uh tiktok like obviously as i said at the beginning like um at launch metrics or target audiences uh like fashion the true and beauty brands this is one of the biggest targets for tiktok because obviously like beauty it's one of the biggest trends fashion also 
Um, and we wanted to understand not all, only their goal, but also like the key reasons why they were like entering into this uh, new channel. On the next slide, we this is part of the report also. And here we can find like the three main reasons that we uh, identified. The first one, uh, as I was mentioning before, is TikTok is a fast growing channel uh, in the last year, not only in terms of active users that I think it's crazy, like the numbers that they, they got uh, from the beginning of the pandemic, um, but at the end also in terms of creators, in terms of like content, as Milan said, as, as you said, uh, like at the end, it's so quick, so easy to like post content and to like create a short video you don't need like big resources or big investment to really create a super engaging uh, story. Um, then the second element or the second reason is the purchasing power. Um, and here we had a, a really interesting stat that say that 68% of users um, having been inspired to find out more about a brand or a product um, was as, like a result of TikTok. Um, and here, I think, especially for our industry, for fashion industry, there are many possibilities with uh, some of the new features that TikTok uh, is developing, like the TikTok shopping, for example. Uh, they are partnering with Shopify in order like, to push uh, like purchases from the platform directly to the brand's e-commerce. So this is definitely something huge uh, for many, many sectors and industries. And then finally, and I would like to focus uh, like our conversation and, and what, what, how we will follow on, on this discussion, the creator hub. Um, one of the elements that we identified through the report is that at the end, TikTok is quite special in the way um, in the way brands are working in here. You know, like at the end on Instagram, we normally will have like a social media manager or a community manager uh, creating the content for Instagram, working with a design team for Instagram. But in the case of TikTok, one of the biggest challenge uh, for brands is like, okay, I'm going to enter into this new channel with a lot of young people do I put my community manager to create videos or should I ask to the marketing person or it's it's a big topic for them and at the end here's where we can talk about the importance and the key role of creators like content experts like Milan uh, or like some of you guys because at the end the opportunity is really huge um, in order to create content not only for your audience but also like partnering with some brands and offering them like original and, and really valuable content for, for their target, target audiences. And on the next slide, we have a super interesting stat that is confirming uh, this. Um, this is part of the report also and says that creators by far represent the biggest voice on the platform next to own voices, celebrities, partners, and media. Uh, but in the case of creators of, or influencers, we can call them as you wish, I, I prefer the creators word, uh, they represent 72% of the app's share of voice. So uh, the media impact value, this value that you can generate uh, on TikTok, 72% is coming from creators. So again, um, here we can see like how important is the role of creators and the big opportunity that represents uh, for you guys. Um, and here I would like to ask you, Milan, like, in terms of brand partnerships, how would you say that they are uh, like managed differently on different platforms? Like we're, we have been talking about the content on Instagram or on YouTube, but in terms of brand partnership and collaborations, what's your experience? What's your, your opinion on, on the differences? Yeah, um, so on TikTok, they have a creator marketplace to kind of link brands and creators. So I'm in that, but that one, I don't feel like that's as effective um, as just having your email in your bio and then companies reach out because that's when you know they're serious. And sometimes on Twitter marketplace, um, these brands are just spamming creators and, you know, trying to find uh, creators who are willing to do videos for such a low cost. Um, and I mean, you get emails about from those type of brands too. And I think for me personally, it hasn't been very different. Like for TikTok, people reach out to me, companies reach out to me directly. And yeah, because I have like the link in my bio that has my contact info and all that. And then it's the same thing on Instagram. Uh, for me, it hasn't been too different. Um, it's just, we have the production value that's going to be a little bit different, I guess. Just the how I produce the videos for them. Sometimes, you know, companies reach out to me just to produce content for their channels so they can post it on their channel, right? Because they want me to create content for them 
um, because they know that, you know, the creators on TikTok understand how the content works and how, what kind of content people want to watch. But in my experience, it hasn't been too different in terms of like how the brands reach out. It's pretty much just working on that deal. That's a little bit different per platform, of course. Mm -hmm. and what would you recommend like obviously like maybe today we have some new creators or like some people that is just starting on the platform or considering to start on the platform like what would you recommend to them uh in order to start like collaborating with brands or or like a start partnering and offering yeah, their content for sure um for so since i have grown a pretty decent size audience for me like i just have brands reach out to me like i'm already too busy responding and working with the brands that reach out to me but for somebody that's smaller like i know people um you know even with just 50 or 100,000 followers or even less than that they're reaching out to brands themselves um and these micro creators these micro influencers are also they also play a big part for some of these brands right because sometimes with a smaller audience, there's a lot more engagement. Like they might have five, 10% more engagement, which will bring in more conversions for the amount of money that these brands spend on even these smaller creators. So I think for the smaller creators, the, the biggest thing is reaching out to these companies and reaching out to these brands. And, um, you know, some of them will work with you. I, I've seen so many creators, uh, so many videos from creators saying that you've reached out to brands and they might have to reach out to a good amount, right? But they will get some, um, companies that will want to work with them because there are companies looking for micro uh, creators. Yeah, and I, I guess the other day when we first met, we were talking about the, like the, the reach on TikTok. Like at the end, it doesn't matter if you have 5 million followers or if you have yeah. like just 50, but if you are like creating super original and different content, it can go viral like really quick and fast. So exactly, yeah, yeah. That, that's, a, that's a good point. Followers don't determine like the success of a collaboration. I think sometimes like obviously with more followers, you're more likely to get more views because um, there's more, you have a bigger audience captured already, but sometimes even with big creators, the each video is judged individually on TikTok. So, you know, a video might not get as many views um, even if you're a bigger creator. And then for smaller creators, they might make one video and that video ends up just blowing up. So it's, it's, yeah. it's interesting. It's cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have a question. Do you have any like brand collaboration in mind from the ones that you have been doing, like that you will highlight? I don't know. Explain the type of content that you created. Uh, I don't know. One of, one of them that you really have on your mind because you like it, you love it. Yeah. So I've worked with, I've worked with a lot of companies. I've worked with um, so I worked with Yada. Yada is a high, they, it's, they're like a bank and they, or they're not like a bank. They have a high yield savings account and they work, they partner with the bank, I believe. So I created a piece for them. And then I talked about how important having an emergency fund is just in case. So having an emergency fund of three to six months of expenses, you know, I think that's important for everyone. Um, just in case something happens, you know, you might, I mean, with COVID, especially people would have definitely needed that emergency fund. And so I made a video around that, what an emergency fund is, because a lot of people don't even know what it is. And then from there, I was like, okay, having that money in a high yield savings account is a good option. So at the end of the video, like I pitched Yada, which was the high yield savings account, right? So that was one way I did a collaboration. So in terms of collaborations, I always try to present a problem. And then I try to, after that, I'll present the company that solves that problem. So Either way, they're going to get value from the video. They're going to learn something from it. And then I think those are the types of videos that convert well with my audience. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I need to say that. And I, I think I'm going to ask you a lot of advice about business because I definitely <laughs> need it. Um, right now, they're looking for people to create content for their page on TikTok, right? I mean, there's companies, I think it was Nerf or I don't know what it was, but these companies are offering like $10,000, $20,000 per month for you to be the face of the brand on TikTok and create content for it. So it's super cool. Great, just a massive opportunity right now with that as well. So sometimes as a smaller uh, creator, you might just wanna pitch yourself to the brand that way. You might wanna create content for their page and yeah. Yeah, something that I was mentioning at the beginning, I think, and it's one of the takeaways, like how brands, and this is something that we see from Launchmetrics, how brands are trying to like, understand better like everything about TikTok like how it works how they can measure 
how they can leverage creators, how they can collaborate with uh, with with you guys and and create content for for their brand. So so yeah, it's um I love I I've been working in digital marketing for like ten years, but I love every time there's a new channel, a new thing happening and going on. You know that there is this excit excitement um, around it, and it it's quite cool. Um, so yeah, that's super interesting. Cool. Do you? Gina, with all your experience, do you think, um, and with everything you've seen with different social media platforms, do you think TikTok is here to stay for the long term? Wow, that's a super difficult question. <laughs> you never know. I mean, um, you know, if if I say that when the internet started, when the social media started, uh, everyone was talking about MySpace. Did you remember MySpace? I don't know. Maybe you were too young. I don't know. But uh, MySpace, remember, yeah. it, it was going to be like the like the top social network, um, whatever. And then it, it suddenly disappeared. Like Facebook yeah. acquired everything and it was like, oh, what happened? It was great. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, I think it's, uh, it's complex. You never know. It's like with, um, there's something that is happening with, you know, a clubhouse. Yeah. The audio yeah. and everyone is now also like talking about audio content. It's super uh, mm -hmm. like cool right now. It's really trendy. And suddenly the other day, I discovered that the Spotify is launching their green rooms, that it's exactly yeah. the same. It's like exactly. the same. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wow. So I guess that Clubhouse, I don't know if it's going to be like a, a really um, like social channel for the future. But yeah, I think it's, it's really hard. But I will say that for TikTok, there is one element that is quite important to consider. And it's the fact that they have been the first ones in creating something new. Mm. And now we saw how Instagram is trying to replicate the same, but they are not getting the same uh, like results, I would say. I, I don't know, yeah. based on your experience also, but I guess like creators that are using Reels and TikTok at the same time, it's, yeah, it's the same, but you are not getting the same results, I guess. Yeah, right? yeah, and people know that those Reels videos are from TikTok. Sometimes the TikTok logo is on there or like, I mean, people know where it's coming from <clears throat> and TikTok yeah. is definitely yeah. dominating the short, video or the short form content yeah exactly so yeah you never know with social channels like they appear and disappear as fast as uh yeah. happen. so so yeah it's true that well it's it's a complex um question to answer but well for let's sure. see for sure um i guess we can jump into the last part of the report uh if i remember well okay the case studies yeah so um, obviously we have been talking about creators and the crucial role that you guys have uh, on the platform and for brands when creating content and when offering them uh, like recommendations on how they could communicate with their audience. Um, so in this part of the report, uh, what we have been doing is analyzing a specific cases. This is something that our audience always love, like analyzing campaigns of creators and brands, analyzing like uh, the type of content that they were creating, the impact that that content was getting. Um, so if we go into the next slide, um, can I hear, uh, we definitely need to talk about trends and challenges on TikTok as it is like the core uh, element of, of the platform. And obviously in our industry, within the fashion and luxury industry, um, there are some trends like unboxing, showcasing that are really relevant. We know that um, you can create a new challenge, you can follow uh, a challenge that already exists, but at the end, the medium part value, the, like the impact that you can get through those challenges, is, it's really key and it's really interesting. Uh, so that's part of the report and what we have analyzed. We can see, for example, for unboxing, uh, the average medium part value that unboxing was creating uh, in the very first part of this year, it was like 12K dollars in MIV. Um, that is quite good. I mean, it's, uh, it, it means that at the end, if you are creating content that is following these trends, you are obviously impacting like uh, an audience that is following these challenges, that is following this, uh, this type of uh, content pieces. So this is absolutely uh, critical when starting to um, entering into TikTok, understanding how TikTok works and, and so on. And in the next slide, I think I have uh, one of the cases that we incorporated into the report. Here it, here it is. So from Navarros, Navarros is a, a Philippine American creator. Um, she's working more fashion luxury with fashion luxury brands and she's uh, like creating like different content related to uh, like trans fashion trends and styles. 
Um, and here we identify like some of the brand collaborations that she had uh, from the beginning of this year. Like for example, she has been uh, working with Chanel, Fendi, Asus, um, and we try to analyze, try to uh, like extract part of the data from those, all those collaborations. Uh, like not only the number of followers that as we said, it's not relevant, so relevant on TikTok, but especially the average median per value that she was able to create and the engagement rate. Like at the end, this is uh, data that we provide to our clients and that is helping them to understand, okay, uh, I'm creating really cool content, but what's the, like the result that I'm getting for it, from it? Um, so this is just an example from the use cases and the, the creator ca cases that we incorporated into, into our content piece, into our report. And let's talk uh, about content, uh, Milan, we have already been talking about that, but let's talk about um, this concept of uh, short form videos. Well, we, we just talk about Instagram versus TikTok, um, but I guess you were saying at the beginning, like how powerful they are, right? And, how easy it is to like to create one of those pieces. I would like to understand like what's the process for you as a creator to uh, I don't know think on an idea, then put it in place, record it, and post it. Like how do you normally work uh, with TikTok content? Yeah, so I try to um, get the for me personally, like I get a script down first um, around a concept, you know, so. Uh, it might be around a Roth IRA, for example, or something like that. And I'll create a script around it and make, that makes it easy to understand. Um, and from there, I find, I always have like a green screen background. So sometimes I'll try to find a relevant green screen background to use. And then I'll record the video with that through TikTok. Um, and then I'll edit it and post it on TikTok. But the ideation phase is kind of the what some is what takes up like most of the time just uh thinking of an idea that will be easy for everybody to understand and something that will be engaging great and what about frequency like do you have like any rules on your own uh like weekly or monthly organization uh for the frequency you're creating content on tiktok yeah so for the i never wanted to like miss a day ever of a post at first you know but then like I've just gotten so busy now and I just try to put out like more quality content now. So I'm trying to like add more sound effects to things. So now I'm starting to take that content and take it outside of edit it like on a different editing app sometimes and just add more sound effects to it make it a little bit more entertaining. So now I'm just trying to focus on getting at least a five, you know, five to six videos out per week and, uh, you know, a, a day here and there is fine. Just here and there is fine to miss just because I am busy and I'm just trying to produce more quality content. Yeah, that's, a, I, I guess that's a, like a good advice for any creator, like try to prioritize like quality to uh, like quantity. Um, mm -hmm. It's also something that we apply when measuring. Uh, so trying to consider like more the qualitative uh, elements. So, so yeah, I, I agree. For that's sure. a, a, I, a good point. For the, when you are starting out though, I think when you're starting out, I think quality or quantity is more important just so, because you need to get used to the platform. You need to understand what works. You need to understand, you know, what gets people, what gets people engaged. And uh, at first that's why I was sometimes posting like two videos a day so I can understand it more. But then once you get the hang of it, once you have like an audience, you know, you have hundred thousand followers, 200,000 followers, then you can definitely start focusing more on the quality and posting less. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. So first, get um, trying to try to focus on the reach, maybe, mm -hmm. and then you can start like focusing on more like quality content. Yeah, that's exactly. a, a, yeah. a good point. Um, I was talking about these trends that is part of our report. Like obviously, in your case, uh, it's different type of trends. But I don't know. What do you think about trends on TikTok? Like the the like the popular challenges uh, that are driving like billions of video views on the app. Like. What do you prefer, um, joining a, a trend that already exists or creating your own trend? I don't know, how, how do you work with, with this type of uh, like content? Yeah, so for me, like I don't, that this is something my, uh, like a, a TikTok rep told me to do, like to get more involved in trends. Is like, personally, I'm not as involved in trends, um, but I know there are some that I could have made videos for. Like I just didn't end up doing it, uh, but I think trends are great. Like they allow you to reach a different 
audience, right? A different audience that you can then capture that might be interested in your content. So uh, I think when it comes with two brands and whatnot, uh, it could be like, it's a really smart way to get more conversions, right? To get more people to go watch their brand because people are watching the trend and then through that trend, they're naturally seeing the brand. So, and then people are going to be more likely to go check out that brand when they're not, you know, being super hard and sold into it. But instead, it's a little bit more natural through a trend. So I think trends are great, especially for, you know, for brands. And, and I guess, I, I don't know, like, obviously, in your case, like tips and tricks, uh, it's kind of like, in, it's super important, right? Like in the, yeah. the type of content that you create, like most of it is like tips and tricks, like advice. Uh, uh, I, I have to say, it's really cool, because I, I'm starting also like, uh, my my own project and when I when I started like looking at your content it was like oh my god this is what I need like I don't have time but it's it's amazing that in in the super short video you can get like one tip one uh, like quick advice for for your business so so yeah yeah tips and, and tricks I guess is is a big part of your content strategy right yeah and, and then there are some like I've seen some style trends right um I think I, after I saw your report I like looked into it more um, I've seen some style trends where people offer like tips for these for style, right? Like fall edition hacks for the fall in terms of style. And then those videos were really yeah. well. So like doing five, you know, like uh, five must have t-shirts for the fall or something like that. I've seen some videos like that, that do end up being really well. And, um, you know, so making those videos can also work for uh, new creators and having like, I think those videos also do well because people know what they're watching. It's like five tips for this, right? And then they're going to be yeah. more likely to watch till the end. So that's something to uh, consider when creating content. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, I don't know if we have like uh, another poll, Kiana, then, or if we can still la launch it, <laughs> if it's working. Yeah. Creator purchase intent. For those who are not creators, have you felt a personal relationship with a micro creator which has influenced your your drive to purchase? That's, I mean, the topic about micro creators. Um, yeah, that you, Milan, you mentioned before, like how relevant they are. They are. And I guess in, in many of the, like we are sending to our clients and like surveys from time to time to understand like how they are working uh, through different channels. And one of the biggest trends also with Instagram and many other platforms has been like micro influencers, micro creators. I guess uh, like most of them are already like tired of this massive uh, celebrities. I, I don't know if we can even like call them uh, creators or influencers anymore because they are like almost celebrities. So obviously they are driving like massive audiences, but at the end, one day they are talking about shoes. The day after they are talking about cars. Yeah, the day exactly. after, so yeah. I guess exactly, that's... yeah. Long-term partnerships with micro creators can be very effective. Hmm. Yeah, 100%. I mean, they, they are not so, <laughs> we, we cannot open a lot of debate with these questions because obviously everyone is, uh, everyone agrees. Um, so yeah, I, again, as I said, like also from the brand, brand perspective, like they are looking for more segmented audiences um, also because they know like the, the, they can reach out to their, um, to their consumers in an easiest way. So yeah, that's a, uh, a really important element to Definitely. to consider. For sure. Great. Um, we are getting to the uh, to the end. I have some key takeaways, like part of what we have discussed with Milan, part of what we have included on the report that I would like to um, show you from the slides. So, can if you can go back to it? Perfect. Great. Um, taking the opportunity as um, we are finishing this discussion to invite you to send your questions. Uh, please don't be shy. We want to have like interaction with you guys. We want that you participate also and that you are part of this uh, debate. So please send your questions on the chat or the question box. Um, key takeaways, uh, I guess some of the topics we have been discussing today, reaching out to new generation of consumers. 
um, well, I, I guess this is something, Milana, we, we didn't talk about this, but um, well, how do you feel your audience is evolving? Do you feel that there is still like a super young target audience on TikTok or is this changing, especially in the last year because the, like, the growth of uh, like new active users has been like really, really huge. Like, how, how do you feel is this evolving? Yeah, uh, for me, so initially, like I had, a, I feel like I had a younger audience initially, but right now, like I definitely have a much older audience. So definitely people in their 20s now. And then um, it's definitely evolved to include a larger demographic. So I think in TikTok in general, like a lot of older people are starting to hop onto it, right? It's kind of like, it's kind of how it was with Facebook at first, you know, not too many people were on there, but then everybody hopped on and now it's a giant, but um with TikTok, like people are, there's, you know, people, more people are starting to adopt it and get on the platform. So, yeah. Yeah. I guess the, like the pandemic has been a, like a big driver for new users and new, like different type of users. Yeah. Uh, I don't know in your case, but I, I remember after the first lockdown last year mm. that suddenly, I don't know, my uncle with 55 years old, he was like, Hey, um, I have a TikTok profile now and I'm, I'm doing TikToks and I was like, what? Really? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, I, I guess at the end we were more connected and it makes sense. Like we, we wanted to like enjoy and still have like a window of entertainment. Exactly. Um, so yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah, There's so, a question, I think, what's the one best way to gain followers on TikTok? Hmm, that's a good um, one. So for so what i've noticed the best way the one thing i would say is the call to action at the end of the video so if you notice in my videos i have like oh because i follow milan so that's why I like um i feel like the conversions have been really well in terms of followers that's why i've gained followers really fast so a lot of videos uh don't tell uh don't say anything at the end right like follow me for more content like this and then so that's why people aren't going to follow like they, they'll just scroll by and they're not going to follow <laughs> and they may not even come across your profile again so it's important to tell your audience tell the viewer to um follow for more content like that right like you know if if you want more more of these videos then follow follow for more something like that and that'll definitely increase how many followers you're gaining and that's like a call to action at the end is definitely one of my biggest um tips when it comes to getting followers at the end of the video interesting we have another question um like... the time time i don't time of day i don't think the time is uh a huge factor i think the content itself is a huge factor like if i post a bad video at a really good time when my audience is active like if i post a video that's not going to resonate so well with my audience even at the best time, like, um, so for my profile, you, from your TikTok profile, you'll be able to see when your followers are, um, active, uh, when most of your followers are active. So, you know, say on one day they're active at 3 PM. So that day I'll post a video, but if it doesn't resonate well with the audience, then it's not going to do well either way. Right. But then if I post like say later in the night at eight or 9 PM, a really good video that's going to resonate with people, it's still going to go viral. Like I've noticed some videos, even when I post late, like initially they may not get the same amount of views because I don't have as many followers that are active, but they'll still end up going viral the next day because they have high engagement. They have a high watch time and watch time is like the biggest factor when it comes to um, videos going viral. So that's, yeah, time ultimately just, I think focusing on content is really important at first. That's super interesting because at the end, um, I mean, compared to other platforms that I, I don't know, but for from a marketing perspective that, like Twitter or Instagram, they have been always like saying, best time to pause. Uh, consider that when your users are connected, uh, low land. Sometimes it was like, yeah. So yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a good that's a good. I think, it's, I think it's best to keep it simple with the, at least with TikTok from what I've seen. Yeah, great. Um, great, so keep sending your questions. We are still here for 10 more minutes. Uh, but following with the key takeaways, micro creators, we have been talking about them. They make unique collections uh, because they have more segmented audiences. They uh, are creating like content that is really connecting with, uh, with consumers. It's all about content trends. Um, 
creators are the most valuable voice to generate content. As I was saying before, like I, I think you guys have a like a critical role in in on TikTok uh, compared to other platforms, and that's something that you you definitely need to think about. Uh, if you are not on TikTok, maybe it's a moment to consider starting on it. Um, and then data and insights are the main challenge to leverage in TikTok. Uh, this is something that we have seen from launch metrics, uh, like based on our report and the survey that we distributed among professionals. Uh, like they all say, like data, they need results, they need to understand. Okay, I'm investing in like TikTok. I'm investing in many other things because obviously, from a marketing department, um, we are spending a lot of money in in different channels and tools. Uh, but they want to understand what's the real return on investment of everything that they are doing. So that's uh, still super important. And then final uh, takeaway or final thought uh, from the report and today's conversation, TikTok is booming, but brands still need to learn about it. Um, so I guess, again, as I was saying, I, I think it's a super exciting uh, moment right now for creators and for brands because we are all learning at the same time. We are discovering uh, like the new opportunities of a platform like TikTok. Um, so Milan, I, I don't know if you want to add something else to this like list or if there is any thought on your mind. Looks Anything like you have you something like... in the chat. Oh yeah? I just saw it. Uh, let's see, does TikTok prefer we use the creator settings on TikTok? I think, um, I'm not really sure. I know recently they've added like the business uh, setting as well where you can kind of have convert your account to like a business account um, but I'd say I think creator settings are probably going to be better um, because TikTok is a creator focused brand like they're not a business focused brand yeah. so um, I think yeah creator settings are probably going to be a better call I'm not sure if you know I haven't seen like any analytical evidence that you know business settings will affect your reach but um, I think creator settings, I'd probably just stay on creator just to be safe. But again, at the end of the day, the content is what matters, even if you are in business settings. Uh, what was the, did I miss a question by the way? So again, like with that, um, just if you missed that part, um, with that, it really, like I said before, like ultimately the content is what matters. Sometimes I've posted at times where my audience is, you know, most active, but the piece still doesn't do well. The video still doesn't do well because it's not. Um, it doesn't resonate well with the audience. So sometimes though, I'll post really late in the night when I don't have an audience that's very active and it'll st still do really well. Like the next day it'll go really viral. So again, it just really depends on how your content is going to resonate with your audience. That's a good tip. So I guess we don't have more questions. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I think it, it has been super interesting, insightful. Um, it's always like good to have a conversation. I mean, from my side, I, I obviously come from the business brand uh, like side. So it's always great having a conversation uh, with creators like you, Milan. So thank you so much. Thank you I, for having me. Yeah, this was awesome to talk about. I love talking about this stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I will start following you because again, I need a lot of tips about business. <laughs> for sure, of course. I'm still learning a lot myself, so always got to keep learning. <laughs>